Well, praise the Lord and welcome to Supernatural Freedom in Christ once again. Today we are continuing our series entitled Tuning Into God's Channel. Now, my last message, I spoke on the subject, 24 reason, ways that God speaks to his people today, part one. And in part one, I presented to you 12 ways that God speaks to us today. Today, I want to continue that lesson. This is part two of that, that same, same message, part two of how God, 24 ways that God speaks to us today. So we're going to start with number 13. We finished with 12 last time. We're going to start with 13 today. So here's number 13. God speaks to us sometimes through messenger angels. When Paul was on a ship being taken to Rome to stand before Caesar, a great storm arose and the ship and all its passengers were about to be destroyed. Paul began to fast and to pray. And as a result, God sent a messenger angel to him with a message from heaven. We find this in Acts chapter 27. Basically, God told Paul through the angel that he would be brought up before Caesar and that all who were on the ship would be spared. As a result, all 276 passengers were saved. God still sends messenger angels today to speak to us. Now, because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we know that this is true. However, messenger angels are usually for special situations, such as announcing the coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, when G Just before Jesus was born, uh, you know, nine months prior to that, a messenger angel came to Mary and told her that she was going to conceive and have a son and she would call his name Jesus. So God used a messenger angel for this special, special situation. Also, God uh, uses messenger angels to give us prophetic warnings for the future or sometimes even situations involving life and death. Now, if you are visited by a messenger angel, you can rest assured that either you are in the midst of some rough sailing like Paul or God is preparing you or us for some rough seas ahead and his voice is speaking to build our faith to prepare us for the incoming storm. Here's another way that God speaks to people today. Number 14, visitations of the Lord. Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus would just come to us himself and speak to us visibly, visibly and audibly speak to us in person? Well, that did happen in the, old, in the New Testament days. In fact, Paul himself received a personal visitation from Jesus on the road to Damascus. And this experience forever changed his life. He went from a persecutor of Jesus and his church to a mighty defender of the faith. A visitation from Jesus will always leave you strengthened in your faith and forever changed. I know if Jesus appeared to me and spoke to me like that, it would change my life. Thomas was changed from a doubter to a faithful witness when Jesus appeared in bodily form to him after the resurrection. You know the story how Thomas said, I will not believe unless I can put my hands in the nail scars or put my hands in his side. So when Jesus appeared to Thomas, it changed his life completely. Now, since Jesus is no respect of persons, he's also promised us that if we would keep his commandments, he would manifest himself to us. Listen to what it says in John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me and shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That's a promise from God, folks. And sometimes God does. I have seen videos, especially on Sid Ross, It's Supernatural, of people who have actually been visited by Jesus and had him speak to them personally. So it can happen and it does happen. It's never happened to me yet, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it would someday. Here's another way that God speaks to people today. Number 15, through signs and wonders. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said that God spoke to us through signs and wonders that Jesus performed. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, it says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. In the first century, God continued to speak to the thousands of people through various signs and wonders and miracles, through the hands of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and even lay ministers such as Stephen. Because of these wonders and signs, 
many people believed in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Again, because Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever, he still speaks to us through signs and wonders today. You know, there are some denominations that teach that miracles ceased, that signs and wonders and miracles ceased when the apostles went off the scene. But that's not true. God still performs miracles. God still gives us signs and wonders that we can, that we can strengthen our faith and believe on him. Here's something you need to remember. A sign points to something greater than itself. Today, with signs, we must go to where the sign points. And the sign always points to Jesus. If you get signs in your life, don't get stuck on the sign or at the sign, but obey what the sign says and get fed by the one to whom the sign points, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's another way that God speaks to people today, through our five spiritual senses. Now, you know that we have physical senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch, and so forth. But we also have five spiritual senses. And this is one avenue of God's voice that some people experience more than others. Spiritual touch, taste, hearing, and sight take some time to properly recognize. By using or exercising our spiritual senses, God will mature us in discerning both good and evil. At times, God will enable us to visually see an anointing or presence of the Holy Spirit on a preacher, a teacher, or a prophet. One example of seeing into the spirit realm is found in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17. Here's what it says. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The angels were there all the time. And Elisha could see them, but the young man could not see them. And he wouldn't and he couldn't see them until Elisha prayed for him that God would open his eyes and he would see into the spiritual realm. What happened as a result of this? The man's faith skyrocketed. Angels and demons are around us all the time. We just can't see them with our natural eyes. But if we simply ask God, he may open our spirit and enable us to see them. Spiritual sight is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul refers to it as the discerning of spirits. Now, such spirits can be discerned by spiritual sight, touch, hearing, and even smell sometimes. For example, sometimes the Lord will open our spiritual senses to smell the unique fragrance of the Holy Spirit to confirm His presence in our, in our, in our realm. God may also open up our spiritual senses to identify unclean spirits. And unclean spirits usually have a very foul, smelly odor. Our spirit man has all five senses in the realm of the spirit, just as our natural man has five senses in the natural realm. Now, here's the key. Don't limit God. But remember, we are required to test the spirits in every matter, according to 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Here's what it says. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits or test the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So, whenever we hear a voice from heaven, we need to always test that spirit and make sure it is a spirit from God and not a spirit from the devil. Excuse me. Here's a 17th way that God speaks. Sometimes we hear incompletely. Sometimes we hear only a part of what is needed to be heard. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. And I believe that God sometimes reveals thing to, things to us in part to draw us closer to him in relationship through more prayer and fellowship. Proverbs 5, 2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. When God reveals something to us in part, and we hear something in part, and we don't understand what he's trying to say to us, we begin to seek God for more information, or more revelation, or more understanding regarding a matter. He spoke to us in part about 
that, he will often help us to find the answer to that particular thing. It may come through more studying of the Word of God, or it may come by more direct revelation from the Lord, or through the various other ways that God speaks to us. On the other hand, the answer may not come until days or months later. Jeremiah waited 10 days for God to speak to him one time in Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 7. Daniel waited 21 days in Daniel chapter 10. The key here is to be patient and trust God. Don't lose hope if you don't receive an immediate answer from God. Here's another way that God speaks to people today. Number 18, through dark speech. Now, I know this one may sound a little weird or strange, but God does speak to us in what the Bible refers to as dark speech or dark sayings. Psalm 49 verse 4 says, I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the heart. The the term saying or dark speech indicates a need for further illumination to fully understand the message. God does not hide things from us, but for us, so that we can discover them as we search them out. God begins the process by speaking, and then we respond by seeking his face. God then gives us more understanding and more illumination on the matter. God spoke with many of the prophets through dark sayings that came in the form of dreams or visions, which needed to be interpreted. When God speaks to us through dark sayings, it's probably because he wants to spend time with us one-on-one, -on -one, speaking to us and teaching us on the things of the kingdom. Here's number 19, 19th way that God speaks to us. We don't hear, <clears throat> but the Spirit intercedes for us. It can involve uh, inward groanings in prayer, intercessory prayer, or even praying in tongues. Romans 8 was this, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. This particular way of God speaking to us is what I call a faith builder. We've got to remember that God has all things under control. Sometimes he keeps certain information from us because it is too much for us to handle in the natural realm. In such situations, if he did reveal the entirety of the message, we may become more of a hindrance than a benefit in prayer. Now here's one that, that you may be familiar with. Another way that God speaks to us is through the interpretation of tongues. Now we can receive a message from the voice of God through the interpretation of tongues either privately in our own prayer closet or publicly in a local church setting. This is another gift of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. And it works in combination with the gift of speaking in tongues. Tongues with interpretation is equal to the gift of prophecy in that they both edify and build up the body of Christ. Tongue with interpretation will not only build up your faith, it will also build up the faith of the congregation as well. Here's one that I'm sure many of you wish you would hear. And it's the audible voice of God. Wouldn't it be nice if God would just come down to us and just as plain as day speak to us with, us with his audible voice? I believe most people would like to hear God speak in this manner. God spoke to Moses audibly. Isaiah records these words of promises, of a promise to believers, you and me. He gives us this promise. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. So you see, God can speak to us with an audible voice if he, want, if he wants to. God guides us in many ways, including the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. God's audible voice, however, is usually reserved for situations involving dangers, that need immediate attention to preserve life or to prepare us for something we wouldn't have the faith to stand against unless we actually heard God speak to us audibly. God doesn't often speak to us in this way, but when he does, I believe instant obedience is usually required. Now, here's one you may find a little bit amusing. God speaks to us, number 22, God speaks to us sometimes through animals. Now, I know this may sound really strange, but let me ask you this. Can God speak to us through animals? 
Well, in Numbers chapter 22 and verse 28, we read this. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Listen, we can't limit God. If God wants to speak to us through an animal, he can. I, I remember in the New Testament, God told Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Excuse me again. He said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. And of course, you know the story. Peter did deny the Lord three times. And then right after he denied him the third time, what happened? The cock began to crow. The rooster began to crow. <laughs> and what was that rooster saying to Peter? I believe he was saying, guilty, guilty, guilty. Because the Bible says instantly Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now let me give you an example of God talking to us through an animal. Now you may find this a little strange, but that's okay. Uh, God, we can't put God in a little box and, and, and say he, he, can't, he can't work outside of that box. We have a little bluebird that likes to come pecking at our windows at our house. And uh, sometimes it will come to our bedroom window. Sometimes it comes to our bathroom window. And sometimes it will peck on that window. Well, one day my wife looked at that bluebird and said, Do you have anything to tell me? And to her surprise, in her mind, she heard the bluebird say, I love you. Again, we must not put a limit on God. If he wants to speak to us through animals, he can. And here's one that's pretty common, and you're probably familiar with this one. God speaks to us through other people. God often uses people to speak to us. This could be the pastor. It could be an evangelist. He could speak to us through our parents. He could speak to us through a teacher. He could speak to us husbands. He could speak to us through our wives. Uh, wives, husbands, could, God could speak to you through your husbands and so forth. Now, here's something that's interesting. Age is not a prerequisite for God to speak through an individual. In fact, the only one of Job's friend that spoke God's, that spoke God's truth to, to Job was a man by the name of Elihu, and he was the youngest of the group. God also wants to speak to others through you and through me. The Bible says this, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. Now, let's not forget that the devil speaks through people too. He speaks through false prophets, false teachers, and even friends and family. Think about it. Job's wife spoke the very words of Satan during their time of great trouble. What did she say to Job? Why don't you just curse God and die? Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. That was Satan speaking through Job's wife. The key is to test the spirits on everything that you hear. We have the Holy Spirit of truth living in us, and we must rely upon him to confirm or to refute whatever is spoken to you through others. And you know, I don't agree with everything that every preacher says. Now, most pastors that I, that I sit under, I'll agree with probably 99%, but there may be an, a little area that I disagree with them. So we have to test the spirits to make sure that what they're saying is from God. And here's number 24, the last one. And this one is, is kind of startling. God speaks to us sometimes in response to our own idols. God may actually allow us to be deceived if we come to a prophet or a preacher of the Lord with idols in our heart. Let me read you a passage in Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 2 through 4. Notice what it says. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them, and I say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Let me say that in another way. Sometimes God will give us the answer that our own idolatrous desires are crying out for which could lead us into a bad relationship, a bad business deal, 
or other bad decisions just to teach us a lesson. Because of this, we should ask God to reveal any hidden sin in our lives and then seek Him for revelation. As a result, He will cleanse us from any idols and then we can clearly hear from the Lord. Now, as you move forward in your desire to hear from God, begin by repenting from any unconfessed sin. Ask the Holy Spirit to remove from you any secret faults and presumptuous sins. Then move forward in faith. And remember this, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Well, that concludes our Bible study for today. Between the last lesson and this one today, you have learned of 24 different ways that God speaks to people. Now, I repeat the question that I said at the beginning of this, of this study. Are you listening? I hope so. Next week, I will bring the concluding message in this series on tuning into God's channel. The last study will be entitled, Seven Keys to Hearing God. You won't want to miss it. Until then, it's great to be alive in Jesus.